Video games, let's talk about them. Ink Between Worlds. Video games, who doesn't like good old video games? You got the fighters, you got the shooters, you got the platformers, and you got the RPGs, and then you got the horror games. All different types of them all wrapped around in nice little consoles or whatever you got, whether it's the NES, the Xbox, the GameCube, the Playstations, or your PC. Don't matter, you got a wide variety of games. But it's really crazy to think about that video games have been around for about 40 plus years now. And just to think that they used to be in a gigantic arcade cabinet before they went into small handheld or home used devices. Yeah, kids. This is how old I am. I still remember the good old Pac-Man tabletop uh, arcade cabinet. Yeah, <laughs> that's how old I am. Ugh, uh, the internet demise of my own age is starting to deplete my own self-esteem. <laughs> but, yet again, it goes into the situation of what type of video game do you like and what type of video games do I like? Well, I can't really pick precisely of what kind of video game I like because I like them all. I, I like playing Mario, I like playing Sonic, I like playing Final Fantasy, I like playing Skies of Arcadia, I like Call of Duty before they got the jetpacks, <laughs> I like Battlefield, and I like several of the other adventure games out there. I like myself a good old Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, and so on and so forth, including Smash Bros. But there are some of those people out there that just don't like them, which, yet again, is also understandable. I respect everybody else's decision on to it. I'm not gonna be like, how dare you, you don't like Smash Brothers? That kind of personality. You, you're just a hater. You just don't like the way how they fucking portray the video game industry with a good old party game like these. No. No, I'm not saying that. But I also understand, like, people's complaints, argues, and disputes about certain other games. Just like how some people understand my disputes and also sometimes question why I don't like certain other games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at you, F-Zero GX. Never going to complete you 100% again. And it's going to be damn near impossible to do it anyways. But, anyways, whenever it comes down to video games, a whole bunch of people have their own set variety. Including, like, racing games. I don't mind racing games here and there. It's just, there's certain ones I just can't really get into. Which makes sense because I'm not very much into some of the racing games out there, you know. Looking at you again, F-Zero GX. I'm watching you. I know you're plotting evil against me behind my back. But enough joking around and rambling about other things. Let me go ahead and ramble about something else, such as the very first game that I ever actually played. Which was... Pac-Man, the tabletop arcade version, and Ms. Pac-Man. Yeah, that's how old I am, everybody. I'm not super old, but I'm still that old compared to most kids and everything else like that. But then I also got to play Galaga and everything. Got to go to the arcade that was here in the mall, used to be here, and I got to play Killer Instinct, uh, like California Rush, I think it was called, uh, Simpsons Arcade Cabinet, Mall vs. Capcom 2, and a whole bunch of other games out there. Just name an arcade cabinet. I pretty much almost played it, including the old school WrestleMania WWF version of it, where it had like Vader and uh, I think it had Bret Hart and uh, King Kong Bundy I think it was, it was on it, the old 2D thing where you have literally four people playing it, yeah, I actually had that. But my very first console that I actually owned and got to play was the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. And my games that I got that on whenever it was my birthday, I got Super Mario Bros. 3, which I still have the original copy from then. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I also got Shatterhand and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade one, the second one, not the one that uh, ABGN made fun of and everybody else likes to rag on it because of how difficult it is, which I also own that one too. So, hey, if you guys want it, to see me suffer and play that game, just go ahead and let me know in the comment section. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but enough of the torture. Let's go back into the conversation of video games. Yay! 
And for a while now, I just kept on getting a whole bunch of NES games like Mega Man, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 5, and Mega Man 6, and so on and so forth. Just getting all those and everything until the N64 came out, which thank you, Grandma, for giving me that, and I love you so much. And I did actually say that, but more excitement, just like, oh, no, just like that. <laughs> and I, I promise not to do that again. But I got to play, the first game that I got was uh, uh, Super Mario 64, which was groundbreaking back then and everything. And I just had a wide eye and I was like, wow, the world is full of magic and wonder. The future is fucking here. I have this guy that's following me with a camera. Creepy, but yay, I get to run around through the fields. I get to actually stop these Goombas in 3D! Yay! And then I got to go and get several other games like uh, Banjo Kazooie, which is actually the game that I literally paid for. I went and got a controller and also that game, and I got the game by using about $50 worth of pennies. Yeah, you heard me right. Fifty dollars worth of pennies, and I'm pretty sure that store closed. Like, oh god damn it, kid! Why, why all the pennies? Why? Well, because one, I didn't get paid that very much, and whenever I got paid, I used it to get another controller where my dollars came in. But whenever I wanted to get Banjo Kazooie, however, that is where I went and spent money on it with my penny collection, because I always always find pennies and just take them, whether they're heads or tails and whatnot. Yeah, I took the Tails ones. I don't care about your superstitious good luck, bad luck scenarios. I don't care. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> but yeah, a penny saved is a penny earned, kids. Lesson learned right there. Right here on this channel. You didn't know that, did you? But yeah, I spent $50 worth of pennies just to get Banjo-Kazooie and spent my hard-earned cash that I actually got from mowing lawns and so on and so forth and mixed in with my allowance to get a controller so that way I can have another controller whenever I play two players. Which is also kind of funny because whenever I got NES, my brother ended up getting a SNES, which he had Super Mario World and so on and so forth like that. Like, I, I can just go on for days and name the list of games that he's had and I had and everything. But whenever I got the N64, he got the PlayStation 1 with uh, Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, which yet again was also like, oh, wow, and everything. But uh, yeah, I got to play a whole bunch of games out there and everything. We used to have a place that we would rent video games called Video Vendor. I miss your video vendor. Rest in peace. But uh, yeah, it's it was a place where it actually had old school games to current games back then, and it stayed around whenever the Xbox and PS2 came out. But yeah, me and my brother would go up there occasionally and go and rent video games up there. And the one that we always ended up renting the most and being more competitive on was Conker's Bad Fur Day. Which, if you may have not seen the <coughs> my streams about it, uh, just, just go ahead and check it out. Check out the playlist up there. You can see my joint this whenever I played it until it got to the war part and then just got mad. <laughs> But yeah, we actually went and got really competitive in that, and the one thing that he hated the most was whenever I pulled a grenade and run at him with it, and as soon as he got away, as soon as it was about to explode, I would chuck it at him and it would blow up. <laughs> or if he got the chainsaw or the uh, katana in Total War, I would just hold out the grenade right now, <laughs> right whenever he killed me, it would kill him, so we would just have two and one, three and, one, and three and two, four and three. <laughs> It would never end like that until uh, we both decided to go into the sniper's pit and just start shooting at each other at a distance because, you know, close combat did not work for his favor whenever I started using the grenades. But, uh, yeah, along with that, we also went and played several other games here and there. Some of them we could only play on his consoles and, well, he lived somewhere else and I lived somewhere else, so we kind of had to walk a good few blocks away. But whenever you're a kid walking a few blocks, it's just like, I <laughs> gotta cross Main Street. <laughs> but yeah, we actually went and played several other different games out there. Like, between me and my brother, we always played different types of games. There's first person shooters, RPGs, and platforms that we always play, and everything. And he's redeemed some things ridiculous that I end up doing, like completing several other games. Until the certain other copy came up to me that made me stop being a completionist. 
Looking at you, F0GX again. And some of you are probably wondering, why are you complaining about F0GX? Well, let me go ahead and tell you that. Whenever I got the GameCube, I had Super Mario Sunshine and several other games. But until I got my hands on F0GX, because I love the other F0 games that I got to play, right? But whenever it came to F0GX, at first it was all fun. And then I was like, there's a story mode? There's a way to get this completed and there's a completion thing to get it done 100%? You're on. I didn't know what I was getting myself into because when it came down to actually playing the game to, you know, trying to beat it 100%, I had to find out that you can't just beat the game, which is also hard enough as itself, which I can't believe some speedrunners are capable of doing it, but the only way to actually completely get it 100% with all characters unlocked is either A, hacking the game, which I will never do. I will never hack into a game to access that. Or B, you're gonna have to go into an actual arcade cabinet. Yeah, that's real necessary. There's no arcade cabinets, except for probably like two left, of F-Zero AX. And where you would have to take your memory card with you and plop it into the machine and do the races and get all the battle data. So, let me make this a little bit clearer. F-Zero GX is hard as hell, especially whenever you go into hard mode or expert. And also, having to grind to get credits to unlock the other story modes and everything. But, anyways, uh, when it comes down to having to do the AX, not only do you have to deal with the same difficulty problems that you're doing with GX, but think about this, you have to drop fucking quarters or tokens in them. Yeah, so you have to spend money just to beat it 100%. So, and just to give everybody an exact, like, how long it took me to get that game 100% complete, it took me approximately three and a half years just to get that done, especially considering the fact that I've also broken three controllers because of it. Yeah, that thing is not good. And I played Ninja Gaiden before, <laughs> and even Dark Souls. Don't even, don't even make me want to throw the controller, but GX. Yes, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, whenever you have to do Rouge's Days, yes, because you can probably hear that in my stream, and I'm not going to deny that. But other games I managed to get to play and got into, such as the Metal Gear Solid series. I played the very first Metal Gear for the NES, which was very confusing as hell, but once you got the hang of it and realized that you had to read up a strategy guide just to figure out what you're doing, it gets pretty okay. I have nothing else to say about it, it just gets okay. But whenever it came to Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, and 4, I just love them. They're just great games, especially 3, because 3 actually gave you a camo meter, also introduced stamina, which you had to eat actual fruits, animals, snakes, and so on and so forth. Well, animals and snakes are kind of the same thing and everything, but there's like different ways that you can approach it. You can either capture a snake alive and then just throw that enemy, and then they would just get poisoned depending on the snake, and so on and so forth. You could trank them, you could kill them and everything. But there's the interesting note too, if you may or may not have seen the Metal Gear Solid 3 gameplay that me and Alfred did, then uh, whenever you go and kill an enemy, it shows up at one boss battle, and depending on how you kill them, depends on how they're going to approach you. Like if you kill somebody in the head, they're like, by a headshot, they're going to be bleeding from the skull. If you slit their throat, they're going to be, heads going to be slanted over and they're going to have blood spewing out of their neck. And then along with that, if you shoot somebody in the crotch, they're just going to hold their balls because it hurts so badly even after your life. So if you shot all those enemies in the nuts on Metal Gear Solid 3, you're a horrible, horrible person. Why would you do that? I'm not saying that I did. You have no proof. But enough about me just rambling around uh, Metal Gear Solid. Let's go ahead and just jump into the other types of games that I always played around with, like Twisted Metal. I actually got to play Twisted Metal 2. I never got to play Twisted Metal 1 very much, but I got to play Twisted Metal 2, Twisted Metal 3, and also Twisted Metal 4, which is very, very weird along with 3, because it wasn't made by the same guys that made Twisted Metal 1 and 2, and got to play Twisted Metal Black and the new Twisted Metal, which is on PS3, and also got to play Twisted Metal Head On, not the PSP version, the one that released on uh, the PS3 after the PSP was released. So yeah, I'm pretty much what everybody would call a gamer because I don't stick with just one type of genre of games that I play. But anyways, go ahead and let me know what your favorite game is and what was your first game in the comment section down below. And let me know if you enjoyed this or not. Let me know what topics I should have later on. I make polls up on Twitter if you want to be part of the, you know, 
vote on what topic I should talk about or whatnot. Or you can go ahead and click the i notification that's up on the right hand corner of the screen to open up the poll or open up other videos that I've posted up on there. And if you want to get involved on some of the videos that I make and also topics that I'm going to end up talking about, make sure to follow me on Twitter. This link to the description is down below. And also I got a Discord server along with that. You can also check that out on the description down below. Well, I'll be posting up some other artwork that I end up doing. You can talk to other people up in there. You can say hi to Firestar, our moderator, and also one of the guys that helped out with Discord and was also a part of Subplay, where we played Left 4 Dead 2 for the 360. But like always, if you guys and gals enjoyed this video, make sure to smack the like button with your face. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell for notifications to let you know whenever we go live and release a new video such as this one. And make sure to share this all around with your friends, your family members, your enemies, so on and so forth. And today's shout out goes to Hey Ghoul Friend on YouTube and Erica Rivers on Twitch. Go and check their stuff out and also don't forget to like and subscribe and follow them and let them know that Daniel sent you over there. You can also find their channels in the description down below. But I will see you all later. Bye bye. Bye bye.